Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Before I begin, like the video, put on your notification bell so that you can know when my up next video uploads. And if you like the video, come down in the comment section. Also, I'm going to need y'all to subscribe too, okay? Don't forget to subscribe, y'all. Hey everybody, welcome to my review of Love and Marriage Huntsville Reunion Part 1. Let's talk fashions. So let's take a look at the ladies' outfits. Of course, Mel was looking fly. She reminded me of the Bodyguard movie with Whitney Houston in her outfit. I am the queen of the night. And um, Kimmy gave me, you know, her body is in shape and she wanted to wear something to show it off. But it, it didn't look good. To me, it didn't look good at all. I didn't like it. It looked like things was misplaced. Like the bra, the breast part looked like it was off. I know she probably wanted to show some boo, but it just didn't look right. And then the leg with the peekaboo thing going on. I don't know. It just didn't look right. And Kimmy is normally a pretty good dresser, but I didn't like that dress on her. Um, Letitia, her dress was nice, but it just didn't fit her body. I, it's just something was off about the dress. I, I, I can't put my finger on it, but it was something that was off about her dress. And then when she sat down, she looked really frumpy in the dress. I don't know if the right word is frumpy, but it made her look bigger than what she is. Let's talk makeup. I feel like all the ladies' makeup was done well. I feel like Mel hairstyle went with her outfit. Tisha hairstyle was cute. Well, wig. Well, they all had on wigs or some hair enhancement, so that's definitely not shade. So please don't take it that way. Wigs, whatever. Was cute. Um... But it to me, it just didn't go with her outfit. Like, the style of the wig was nice, but maybe a different color. Probably would have brought out her whole outfit and her whole look. Um, her makeup, to me, was on point. Kimmy, her makeup was on point, but I didn't like that wig on her. I don't know if it was the color. I, I think the cut was probably it. I think if her hair was styled a different way, it probably would have went really well with her outfit. Let's talk the guy's fashion. Like, Marceau looked like he had on maybe a shark skin suit. Now, I don't know suits or whatever, but a shiny suit that was infused with some spandex and neoprene. I know I'm foul for that, but that's what it looked like. Martel came looking like casket shark funeral funeral director. Um, he didn't have on one of his Django shirts and ties so he looked all right but martel always looked good in the suit and maurice i don't know what was going on with his suit it was kind of tight tight okay and what was that a fur collar or just a black velvet collar i'm not sure what he had on overall mm, i think the guys looked okay so for me the couples looked together mm, wasn't cohesive with leticia and marceau but you know they're the happy couple that's fronting for the world so for me, Kimmy and Maurice was given, it's hard out here for a pimp when you can't get the money to pay the rent. So this was my sentiments every time Letitia opened her mouth. All you can do is shut the So on to the review. So Martel should have just bought out a towel because he was drooling once he saw Melody. Oh, and Carlos King's suit was nice. It was a paisley, silver, and black. Get them up. So they opened up the first segment with showing the accomplishments of the couples, Mel and Martel. So Mel with her 7th Avenue skincare line. Kimmy and Maurice has opened up the first black-owned title company in Huntsville. Um, Martel with his wine. And Tisha with nothing. And Marceau being able to expand black. So Carlos King is, um, I guess, congratulating everybody, saying how proud everyone on the stages of everybody. So they start clapping except for Mel. Carlos was like, you're not going to clap? And she was like, nope, I'm good. She said that she did a whole congratulations. She proud of everybody. Last year, it didn't air. So this year, she good. She said she really don't care what anybody's doing. And I don't blame her. It took them how many seasons to do something outside of talking about Mel and Martel's marriage? So Maurice decides to speak up and say he's happy for everybody. And Mel was like, good for you. Make sure you actually show it. So Kimmy jumps in and wants to know why she's saying that. And Mel lets it be known that they had an interview. And Maurice was like, him, her and Kimmy were not friends. And she felt like it wasn't his place to speak on it. And it's true. 
he gonna say Mel and, and Kimmy are not best friends. No, they're not best friends, but Mel has been there for Kimmy, and you just even spoke up about it. So, really, it wasn't your place to say what kind of relationship Kimmy and Mel had. So, I agree with Mel on that. Then, Carlos King asks Kimmy if do she consider Mel a, good, a friend. And Kimmy says, yes, I do. She's there for me, the calls, the food, the referrals, everything. So, hell yeah, Maurice spoke out of turn. And then he agreeing with Kimmy. So, ugh, I can't with these men. These men, I don't know about these men on this show. And, of course, Tisha's on the sideline making faces as usual when it comes to Mel and Kimmy being friends. Like, Tisha, get a life. Then the segment turned to Letitia and Marceau and them building the Scott Manor. They claimed that there should be Blasting Rock next week, whenever that happened. But, um, we'll see. They said it's turning into a Chateau Charade. They just had to mention Charade. So, Marceau says that when you're building something great, it takes time. Whatever. So, then they talk about what well, Carlos King says. People were surprised that she started out as a housewife and to find out that she's the sole owner of Schultz. I mean, Sculpt. So, she says, never underestimate the power of a wife. Quick interlude. All you can do, you shut the So she said all she had to do was buy Martell out and change the, a little bit of the paperwork. So Martell jokes and said the worst thing they ever could have did. So Carlos asked Martell, did he regret being bought out? He says, no, that was the plan from the beginning. So before he could finish his sentence, here go Tisha, he should. So she goes on to say that when she bought out uh, Martell, the company was in a negative and that was a multi-million dollar company. She thought she was doing something when she said that. So, Martel, listen, sometimes he don't really know how to speak, but he pretty much gave it to her. He said that she should be grateful. It's not, it's not an unusual thing for companies to be in a negative the first few years of business. So, what she's saying is false. What she's saying is false, but the Hulks helped them start this business because they were down on their luck. This is what you call ungrateful people, especially Tisha. So, Carlos King asked Melody... You know, she was part of it. What does she know? So she was like, I don't know about the numbers, she said, but I know I brought in my connections to make sure that they got big jobs. So what they did with the money, I don't know. And then in jumps Marceau, trying to make it sound all educational. Martel and Melody brought something to the table, and I brought how to run a business to the table. And, of course, him and Tisha ain't on the same page because Tisha always speaking out of turn. Always trying to shade somebody. But if somebody do it to her, she crying and she want to get back. So Carlos King asks, how does he like working? Ask Marceau, how does he, he like working with his wife? Of course, he does not want to work with his wife. And she jumps in and says, we need to get a couple. She wants successful couples to show us how to do it. How to separate business from personal. Girl, you don't know how to do that. So then Carlos King asks him about the lawsuit that's all over the internet. Um, Marceau said it, it's embarrassing. It was one of his biggest deals and then COVID hit and, you know, he was building a restaurant, starting a partnership with black, all these excuses. Don't, he ain't really answer why that he in a lawsuit. But anyway, Tisha jumps in and says she's so sad that this happened because that's the reason why Marceau went to Africa. Uh, what? So then Martel jumps in and says, is that the reason why he went to Africa? He wasn't at home? Tisha says, that's one of the reasons. And then Carlos King was like, do you know something? He was like, no, no, I'm just trying to understand. Like, so then Carlos King asked Tisha, like, you wasn't upset that he went to Africa. She said initially she was upset. But then when she, he explained to him that he needs some me time, she was okay with it. You a big dummy. So then Carlos King asked Kimmy if she would be okay with him going, and before he could finish his sentence, Kimmy was like, no. And then they show Martel shaking his head like, he knows something. Like, if you know something, say it. The fuck? So Carlos King asks her about her naive statement about if Marceau was cheating, God would tell her. And she says, these rumors been going up around for five years since we started the show, which we find out later that that's a lie, because Kiki brought out some stuff that happened before this show started. So, so she her thing is 
if there's no proof, he ain't cheat on me. She, so basically, she let him cheat in peace until it hits her in the face. I ain't even going into the details of what happened in this segment. Because basically, that's what she's saying. She's going to let him cheat. Now, they're talking about Tisha and Marceau and how Tisha feel about her marriage and she's going to stay with her man. Here she go bringing in Martel cheating and how he was caught and things was brought up. Which ain't got nothing to do with you and your marriage. Why is you bringing Martel into this? So, Carlos King asks her, do she have any doubt that this could happen? She goes on to say no, but Mel and Martell's personality. What does that have to do with the question that he asked you? Answer the question. Well, you did say no. But what does that have to do with you and your marriage? So Tisha's thing is, if Mel and Martell was upset with them because the way they put stuff out about their infidelities in their marriage, they would have put some stuff out on the Tisha and Marcel. So which, what is it, Tisha? Was Mel trying to destroy your marriage or not? Because now you're saying if they had something, they would have put it out. So which one is it, Tisha? Is Mel trying to destroy your marriage as you keep claiming for the past how many seasons and episodes? Then she talks about a receipt that Martell sent her. But you know, I can't trust nothing Tisha say. Because she always painting a narrative that fits her storyline. I'm going to need to see the text, Tisha. So Carlos King turns to Melody to ask that when you told Tisha that Marcel was cheating, were you lying? Melody was like, no. So Carlos King was like, do you have proof that Marcel was cheating? So Melody was like, let me ask you, because y'all was privy to plenty of conversation. And Carlos King was backpedaling and pussy popping okay he was like he don't remember any conversations so Melody was like she has a text she can show the text if she have to so it was said that a girl's trip was being planned the girl was asked to come on the trip and the girl said she would need to be paid if she's going to come on the trip Mel has these text messages. I really wish they would show these text messages, okay? But Tisha's claiming that Mel paid the girl. Now, when Tisha was in her interview with DJ Richie Sky, she said people have tried to pay people to be on the show. She ain't never mentioned Mel's name, but here she's saying that it was Mel. But I believe Mel. Mel was like, talk to production, because Carlos King was on that phone call. So for me, when you in a battle, when you in a war, it's all hands on deck. They was coming for Mel. Mel was coming for them. So the way Marceau was questioning um, Melody, the better question would have been, so do you know this woman? So for me, this was an irrelevant argument because he's going to let Marceau cheat in peace until the evidence slaps her in the face. So Carlos King brings up the off-camera meeting that happened about the couples not speaking about things that are off, speaking about things that are off limits. Kimmy's was that she didn't want people to know that Maurice hung out after 4 a.m. And she said it could be misleading the women. I didn't get that at all. I need more explanation on that one, Kimmy. Then Marceau and Tisha off on the side. Marceau says, we didn't have shit to say anyway. And Tisha says, we've been honest and open at all times. I would like to know about what. Because all y'all ever did was talk about Mel and Martell. I still don't know what go on in y'all relationship. Outside of Marcel, Marce, what is his name? Marcel starting businesses. He don't want to work with you. And he really wants you to be at home raising them kids and out his way. So then the conversation turned to the rumors about sex parties at Credit One. You hear Marcel say, um, do we got names? Because Maurice is threatening a lawsuit. Kimmy was like, we're going to keep it a buck because a lot of people want us to keep it a buck. She claimed that her office was above Credit One. And Maurice... Martel, Marceau, and the other guy, what's his name? Sadaric. So Kimmy said they would come to her office and hang out. And Carlos King says to do what? She said, well, to listen to music, drink, and talk. She says part of the reason that they started black is because they wanted a place to hang out. And I did a, um, a, 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 I did a short, and I was asking, like, is Black the only place in Huntsville? Like, they don't have no other clubs and lounges in Huntsville? The hell? So Carlos King jumps in and said he's a gay man. And he know that men ain't just getting together just to listen to Beyonce music, okay? So Kimmy needs to make it clear that at that time, 
Maurice was not her man. But why you letting him use your office, though? Carlos King wants to know, were there women there? She said, no, that's the thing. It was always men there. Here go Marceau. Let's just make it be clear that Marceau wasn't there all the time. He was barely there. But nigga, you was there. A hit dog will holler. So Maurice said, if the rumors keep going, somebody's going to be facing a lawsuit. Um, can somebody tell me why uh, Martel is smirking like that? So Carlos, Carlos King says that there seems to be some respect that people, they won't go dark on each other. And here come Marceau and Tisha. Talking about we wasn't willing to go dark to expose them, but they was willing to do everything to expose us. Tisha, you just said that they didn't put nothing out on you. So Martel just basically said he knows some shit, but he ain't going to put it out. But Tisha ain't got nothing to say to that, though. Hold on. I'm, I'm about to put a throwback clip in. Hold on. Martel has a matching BMW with somebody, and it's not his wife. So who was exposing who? Because only person that said something was Martel. So Carlos Queen questions Martel, asks him if he he brought out the 20 women. If not 20 women, do he know of Marceau cheating? And Martel basically said he's not going to say anything about that. Tisha, your eyebrow ain't going up on that? Oh, I forgot. You're going to let him cheat in peace. So Carlos King asked him, have they ever owned an apartment together, Martel and Marceau? Um, Marceau says no. And his brother jumps in and says, yes, you did. Stag main place. And Tisha and Marceau acting confused as to, because they don't know what's going on. Only to find out that as, a, as the comeback group, they own this place. Like, what? So Carlos King lets them know that from somebody that's looking from the outside in, he said there are some truth to the rumors that everybody put out. So he lets Tisha know that you're a woman that's learning your worth. Why Tisha look up and had to think about it? Oh, do I have worth? She's a dodo bird. So Carlos King basically said that if it comes to you, you're not going to be ready for it. You wouldn't be able to handle it. And she goes into the spill of, of course I would be hurt. Of course I would be hurt. So he says to her, if you ever found out that he cheated on you, would you leave him? She said, we will deal with it, and most likely I will leave him because I never cheated on my husband, and I expect the same loyalty. Well, girl, again, just let him cheat in peace because you staying. You ain't going nowhere. Again, Martel, what is this look? Please explain. All right, so in comes Kiki. Kiki's here to explain that their their love, Marceau and Tisha's love bubble might be burst. So they go back to the scene where Marceau got crazy on Kiki because he pretty much ain't let her get out what she wanted to say. So it comes back to Carlos asking Melody, why did she invite Kiki to her party? Mel lets it be known, I knew Kiki before Tisha, and it's my Christmas party. My Christmas party. So Tisha feels that um, Melody brought Kiki around to come at Tisha. And, um, Melly was like, basically, she know that Kiki and her experience the same, um, experiences when it comes to Tisha and how she move. And I can believe that. They always want to say Mel is using Kiki. But what happened when you use Kiki to confront Kimmy? And you can't say that you ain't use Kiki for that. Okay. So, Marceau jumps into the women's conversation as usual. And I didn't even hear what he said, but Tisha was like, let's not talk about who he bring. Let's talk about Kiki. That's who we focus on. No, we're going to talk about this too. Just like Mel and Martell is part of your storyline, we're going to talk about this too. Mel was like, well, we know who you have do your dirty work and why they scan to Miss Wanda. <laughs> so Tisha decides to tell Mel that Kiki told her that um, Mel wanted to look up Marceau and Tisha's rap because she knew somebody in the courthouse. So Kiki was like, I said that? She said, I don't remember saying that. Now, listen, Tisha is a liar, okay? If y'all look at my throwback series, I have a series where I say they never liked her. Y'all got to check that out because I show the habits of Tisha and how she do things to try to fit her narrative. So basically, Kiki was like, I did not say that. So Tisha walks up stage talking about you a male's puppet. So this was all a whole act. She planned on doing this to bring these two ass puppy puppets out. Kiki was like, oh, look at Tisha brought out her twin. And her whole puppet thing fell flat. That shit fell flat. So Mel was like, oh my gosh, she be around the children too much. Did you and Destiny and Miss Wanda come up with this? Because it's corny. So we find out that Kiki was taking um, conversations back to Tisha to make her feel comfortable. And know that her friendship with Melody doesn't affect Kiki's and Tisha's relationship. 
Kiki felt like she had nothing to hide and she did nothing wrong, but it was a little messy to me. So Tisha is upset that Kiki was talking about her marriage, but you wasn't upset when you was talking about Mel's marriage when Mel was going through it, but you mad at Kiki for talking about your marriage because you was hurt and going through it. You are a walking contradiction. So Carlos King asked, was there rumors about Tisha having infidelity in her marriage? Rich, I'm going to let this sit here. She has had to confront that issue of if he was cheating or being unfaithful or not. Was yes. this before the show? Yes. Okay. So is Kiki lying right now? Yes. Now, now Letitia swore up and down on many episodes and many seasons that she's never experienced infidelity in her marriage. You just sat there and told a whole last lie and then decided to tell us the story about how you found a picture in Marcel's phone. To be continued. You a whole lie, girl. Y'all, that's all I got on this first episode of the uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville reunion. Um, Tisha's a whole mess. Like, oh my God. I, I can't even take her anymore. Um, Mel was sitting there stiff, but I take it that, you know, pain is beauty. She couldn't really move in that outfit if she wanted to be cute, okay? Um, Kimmy and Maurice, um, they stayed pretty quiet, pretty much. Um, and I guess we're going to see the action between Wanda and Kiki on the next episode and some more stuff going to pop off, but see y'all on the next review. Thanks again to my new subscribers. I really, really appreciate you guys. Um, come down in the comment section. Let's discuss this show because that puppet show was a bunch of bullshit. All right, guys. Peace. Mm -hmm.